Good evening, Bahamas. You're tuned in to MB12 Weekend, broadcasting from Cable 12 Studios on Robinson Road. Coming up tonight in news, another one of the nine victims of Grand Bahamas' deadly plane crash laid to rest. The Prime Minister sounds off on the industrial action taken by immigration officers this week. The new FNM deputy leader defends his leadership style, plus why a top business expert says 2015 may be a great time to start a new venture despite value-added tax. I'm Paige McCartney. We've got those stories and more straight ahead on MB12 Weekend. Welcome once again to MB12. Homegoing services continuing for the victims of that tragic plane crash three weeks ago in Grand Bahama that claimed the life of Dr. Miles Monroe, his wife, and seven others. Today, family and friends laid to rest the man who many described as a jack of all trades, but loved to soar the skies. In that somber service, mourners remembered Captain Stanley Thurston as a caring and loving individual who got to see the world. Kyle Joaquin has the story. The last couple weeks, whenever I'm going through a tough time, I would call him. I would say, Daddy, I'm just calling for my daily dose of encouragement. And he would either tell a joke to make me laugh, or he would give me a scripture. His last mission um, with the ministry was as Pastor Miles' chief pilot. And he took that very seriously. He would prepare days before if he knew Pastor Miles had to travel. And um, he saw that as his contribution to the kingdom of God, getting them to their destinations safely. The daughters of Captain Stanley Thurston pay homage to their father in a touching video shown at his homegoing service. Hundreds of family and friends of Captain Thurston, also known as Doc, gathered in Bahamas Faith Ministries International this morning to remember the man whom they described as a fun-loving and talkative man who possessed a heart of gold. Thurston was the chief pilot for Dr. Miles Monroe and piloted the doomed flight which claimed his life and eight others on November 9th. One of Thurston's two daughters, Dion Thurston Dorsett, spoke of how her father loved encouraging people and playing an active role in people's life. Although he was Superman to us, my father knew he was just a man. And like all men, he had an appointed end. He ensured that Loren and I knew the one who would never leave us or forsake us, the Lord Jesus Christ, the great provider, the great protector, comforter, Prince of Peace. And that is his greatest gift to me a life lived for Christ. We are so proud of you, Daddy. Thinking of you in heaven puts an automatic smile on my face. We love you and will always cherish the gift God gave us in you. I won't say rest in peace because I know he's not resting, he's having fun. God bless. The children of Pastor Miles, as well as the family of Dr. Richard Pinder, were also in attendance in a show of support for Captain Thurston's family. Thurston's last mission in the church was the chief pilot for Dr. Monroe, a post which his family says he cherished. Thurston is also known for being one of the two that laid the foundation for Trinity Air Bahamas after his tenure with Bahamas Air. During tributes, happy memories of Thurston were shared by relatives and friends who knew him best. He possessed the blessed hope and purified himself accordingly on a daily basis so that when the time came for him to be absent from his body, uh, he would have been ushered in the presence of his Lord. Dark is among the blessed ones who died in the Lord. He has ceased from his labors and his works to follow him. I have been inspired to make this declaration that Stanley Thurston and the others did not die in the plane crash. They died safe in the arms of Jesus. 
Doc was a man, as they said, I need not repeat this, of great spiritual capacity and principle, outstanding. Matter of fact, he, be, he believed so much in his ability as a Christian. I remember one time, one of the pilots said he had a headache. And Doc said, hey, come to me, let me lay my hands on you and heal you. Well, pilots are not known for being very religious people. The guy took off and he ran. He said, no, 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 I don't want you to heal me. But I believe that pilot must have been healed because he never complained about headache after that. This man was just there, took the cup of humility, took the cup of self-sacrifice, took the cup of love and dug into the rich creativity, the reservoir the Lord had within him and just gave it out to all of us, God's water boy. And now, today, we are here because the water boy has graduated to a bigger team. He's been drafted. Now there are still three victims of that plane crash left to be buried. On Tuesday, Dr. Richard Pinder will be laid to rest. On Wednesday, there will be a memorial at the National Stadium for Dr. Miles Monroe. And on Thursday, he and his wife will be laid to rest right here at Bahamas Faith Ministries International. Reporting for MB12, I'm Kyle Joaquin. Well, a team of officers from the Central Detective Unit on Long Island investigating the murder of a woman in her home during an apparent armed robbery. Reports are that the woman, identified as 53-year-old Andrea Carroll, was discovered tied up and dead at a home in Deadman's Key, Long Island. The victim had one daughter. Police are investigating. And Prime Minister Perry Christie said he was extremely upset to hear of how hundreds of visitors had to wait in line for hours to clear immigration at Lyndon Pinling International Airport this past week. The visitors who were here for the hotel industry's busiest period of Thanksgiving had to suffer the consequences of action by immigration workers. Christie said visitors should never have to go through something like that when they come to the Bahamas and it should not be allowed to happen in this country. When they described to me this morning these people who were making a visit, hundreds of them to the Bahamas for the first time, and what they were subjected to yesterday, as Prime Minister of the country, I, there, there is no explanation, no kind of apology. Bureaucratically, administratively, it's not supposed to happen. So even if the workforce, we, would, we should not in this country allow things like that to happen. But it happens. Executives of the Bahamas Customs, Immigration and Allied Workers Union have denied ordering any industrial action. However, Director of Immigration William Pratt says many of the officers called in sick on Wednesday. Christie said the officers should not have allowed their industrial issues to get in the way of doing their job, especially when it comes to the lifeline of the country. I don't care what the industrial agreement is. I don't care what the level of vexation is whatever the principle is, we cannot allow in our country ourselves to mistakenly cause people who represent the lifeline to our country to be disappointed and not come back. The Ministry of Public Service has already stated that it is awaiting the return of the union's legal counsel so they can carry out negotiations and pay the disgruntled union employees. A newly elected deputy leader of the Free National Movement, Peter Turnquist, is firing back at a recent Nassau Guardian National Review article that labeled him and party leader Hubert Minnis dull and uninspiring. Turnquist said that article could have been more objective and he had Minnis and he and Minnis have a lot to contribute to the nation. Dana Smith reports. In the face of criticisms that the newly elected FNM leadership does not have winning potential, its new deputy leader is hitting back. Peter Turnquist said despite what critics may say, the Bahamian people have a different opinion and he's confident in the abilities of this new FNM team. I, I um, had the opportunity to read the National Review as I always do. Um, and uh, certainly the author of the piece um, is entitled to her opinion. Um, the Bahamian people, I believe, uh, in the main, have a different opinion, uh, backed up by the many, 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 many calls uh, and, and uh, statements of support and excitement that I have received personally and that the party has received. And so I don't know um, what basis um, the review would have used for uh, the commentary, 
Um, certainly, uh, Ms. Dames is uh, um, entitled to her opinion. Uh, everyone has one. Um, but I, I, I will say that I do believe uh, that it was a little bit, um, uh, it could have been done better and more objective. The National Review said although Menace's victory on Friday will no doubt bring some stability to the organization, Menace does not have what it takes to provide strong, visionary, and inspirational leadership. The article labeled Menace lackluster and the new FNM team a dry well. Turnquest is not the only FNM who took issue with the article. Newly elected party chairman Senator Michael Pintard told NB12 it's unfortunate National Review and other critics didn't do a deeper analysis of the winning team. Former Deputy Prime Minister Brent Simonet also spoke out, stating he believes Minnis will be a changed leader. Turnquest said he and Minnis may not be the most flamboyant politicians, but that shouldn't be an issue as that's not what they're about. It is true uh, that uh, neither Dr. Minnis or, or myself are the kind of people who are going to stand on the side of the road and carry on like idiots. We're not going to do that. We've had enough of that in this country. We have it today. If you were to look at the, the leadership we have today, he can speak on anything, anywhere, and make you believe that the world is either ending or beginning. But has that helped us as Bahamian people? We need to start thinking about what it is that we're trying to accomplish. What is it that people are saying? Uh, and, and so, you know, we're not about the hype. We're about substance. And that's what we bring, substance. TurnQuest replaces former FNM deputy leader Loretta Butler-Turner, who lost her bid for the party's top post. During her tenure, Butler-Turner proved to be an outspoken force both in Parliament and as a leader of the FNM. National Review labeled her a very good communicator who will continue to outshine Minnis in parliamentary debates despite her unsurprising defeat. Taking note of his predecessor's significant impact, Turnquist said with Butler Turner's assistance, he's sure he'll also be able to make such a contribution. Mrs. Butler Turner has made a significant impact on this party and on this country. Uh, her contributions um, certainly are uh, beyond, I think, most uh, in Parliament today. And we respect her highly uh, for what she's been able to accomplish in the last two and a half years in terms of representing the party, representing her, her constituency, and representing this country. Um, I hope, uh, with her assistance, uh, because I, I've said to her that I need her guidance, um, I hope that uh, I will be able to um, hold my end of the, of the stick, uh, so to speak, uh, to, to continue to hold this government accountable and to put forward policies and positions that are well-reasoned uh, based upon sound uh, uh, thinking and research. Turnquest said the general mood in the country is that the government is failing and the FNM is aware of the solutions the country needs. Reporting for NB12 Weekend, I'm Dana Smith. Well, concern about the level of Chinese investment in the Bahamas has mounted following the sale of the British colonial Hilton to China Construction America, the same firm that has financed the multi-billion dollar Bahama Resort. But even though the same company will be building a new modern resort just miles away from the $3.4 billion Bahama, Senior Vice President of Government and External Affairs Robert Sand said the company is not concerned about possible competition. Investment in tourism is good. And certainly investment from China or the Far East is good but because it brings to the market an international market that was heretofore never present in the Bahamas and that will all go well for the future. And also weighing in on the public opposition to the level of Chinese investment, Minister of Housing and Environment Kenward Dorsett said, Bahamians have to be mindful that any substantial investment in the country's tourism product is overall good for the economy. And I think that most of this angst is as a result of the recent announcement of an investment in the Hilton Hotel, where essentially one non-Bahamian group is selling to another non-Bahamian group. Um, I think that we need to be very cautious um, because some of the commentary, uh, to be perfectly honest, um, you know, speaks to a, a xenophobic 
sort of mentality. Um, that really does not bode well for a country that prides itself on the amount of foreigners that come to our shores uh, to enjoy our sun, sand, and sea. Dorset added that it's mostly Bahamians who own the majority of property of the Bay Street Corridor, so fears of, ch of a Chinese takeover are baseless. Entrepreneurs, um, if uh, given an opportunity or interested, uh, like everyone else, um, should be able to um, seek um, acquisition of assets. That hotel property itself has been on the market for a significant period of time. Um, and so I'm not one who, who certainly um, uh, 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 is concerned to the extent of, of, of any sort of Bahamians being pushed out of, uh, uh, of the mix uh, whatsoever. And the downtown Nassau partnership, which is um, aiming to redevelop the area, is hoping to meet with China Construction America to discuss how to incorporate the firm's development plans for the Hilton and surrounding area into an overarching strategy for the redevelopment of downtown Nassau.